Uh, when you uh, deploy overseas and you say goodbye to your family, obviously within the back of your mind there's uh, the fact that you're not going to see them for a long time. I've got two young children. Uh, what effect is that going to have on them a six month uh, absence from, of the father? But actually in, uh, my wife understands that I've been in the army for 14 years now and I had two families for the last two years. One was a wife and two children and the other one were my soldiers who I was taking overseas. My responsibility for those six months was to the families of those soldiers I took overseas. Um, and so it's with mixed emotions and uh, frankly you almost have to um, put the emotions of your family into a little box not to be open for six months time and then you concentrate on, on, on your military family. Arriving in Tarancot uh, was an interesting uh, experience. Patrol Base Wali was unique within, the, uh, within Uruzgan as the only patrol base where the Australians and the ANA live side by side without any physical separation between the two forces. The patrol base itself was probably about 200 metres by 200 metres square. We had about 100 Australian soldiers living there and probably about 150, 180 uh, Afghan soldiers living in uh, hardened accommodation to protect from uh, indirect fire such as mortars or rockets um, and dining in separate facilities but mingling and mixing throughout the day and that built a really good rapport between the two forces. So patrol base Wali is right on the edge of the green zone. Uh, it's almost centre of the Mirabad Valley um, and so we had a lot of locals coming in. There is no district centre in the Mirabad Valley so by default patrol base Wali became the centre of government within that valley. If there were any disputes, the Afghan locals came for, to get them resolved uh, through the commanding officer of the 3rd Kandak based at Patrol Base Wali. I think by the time we'd arrived, the Australians had been there for a couple of years, um, and the locals were very used to seeing Australian soldiers uh, around about the valley. Um, the key elders understood that we rotated on a sort of six-month cycle. They understood and they gave us uh, the benefit of their wisdom when we first met. They talked a lot about their culture. They gave us uh, hints of what we should and should not do around to, to, so that we didn't cause offence. Um, and very quickly we built a rapport. They, they've seen this many times before um, and so they were used to welcoming us as new, newcomers into the valley. I think the soldiers that we deployed with, with uh, the 3 RER task group, are probably, or were probably, the most culturally sensitive soldiers that have ever deployed out of Australia into, a, into an environment. Before we deployed, we had Afghan uh, elders come and talk to us about uh, how to interact with Afghan elders in country. So you were getting the wisdom and the benefits of uh, Afghan emigres over here in, uh, in Australia so that you could utilise that when you were over in theatre. Loss of face is a big thing within Afghan culture. So our soldiers from the very beginning were informed, if you have an issue with an Afghan soldier, you walk away, you tell your company sergeant major, you tell myself as the OC, and we then brought that up with the Afghan chain of command. That allowed the Afghan command to deal with it. It allowed the uh, Afghan command to deal with it without lo that soldier losing face. And also uh, enhanced their position within the Afghan command structure. The, the strengths of the ANA soldier are a, uh, an amount of robustness within a very austere environment. Um, they understand the environment that they work within. Uh, they are tough men and tough fighters. Perhaps some of their weaknesses are within the logistics and planning side. I think uh, it's fair to say that forward planning uh, is perhaps not an intrinsic Afghan trait. And that was something that we were trying to bring into uh, into what we did as mentors. There's no doubt that over uh, the couple of years that the Australians had been there before we arrived, that the Afghan army had increased tenfold in, in their ability. They were patrolling and they were keeping uh, the insurgency in the Mirabad, which had a couple of years ago been the, one of the worst valleys in Afghanistan. There was now very little insurgency. And that was uh, mainly due to the mentoring efforts of the teams who'd come before us, who had increased the professionalism and the capability of the Afghan army uh, to keep that insurgency at bay. Um, what we saw was small groups, maybe two or three men, every couple of weeks trying to come in to lay an ID at night. There was very little small arms attacks at all within the Mirabad Valley, 
and that was because of the ability of the ANA to defeat them. By the time we arrived, there were a number of caveats on uh, what we could do. And one of them was all the patrolling we had to do had to be partnered with the ANA. Um, now, that, that leads to some restrictions on what you can do. And perhaps it didn't give us the freedom we would have liked to shape the environment um, as much as we'd like to have done. That aside, we turned that round into an opportunity. And what we developed was something called uh, targeted enabled mentoring. So we worked out and analysed where we felt the ANA could have an influence and target the insurgency. We then discussed with the ANA where we felt they should patrol. Uh, we accompanied them onto those patrols and as a result it had a positive effect on the insurgency. Uh, during Ramadan we were conducting 40 night patrols a week uh, across uh, the Mirabad Valley um, with the ANA. Um, some of those were ANA only, the majority of them had us with them. About halfway through our deployment, uh, the situation in Khazurizgan suddenly deteriorated rapidly. Uh, the Taliban had ambushed some Afghan local police who were Hazaran and had beheaded four or five of them. Uh, the Afghan local police raided a, a local village, uh, killing about nine uh, Taliban who the locals claimed weren't Taliban but were actually uh, Pashtun civilians. This flared up a centuries-old inter-ethnic rivalry between the Hazaran and the Pashtun tribesmen. As a result, uh, the head of the Afghan local police up there was indicted and, uh, and was told he was going to be arrested. Uh, he said, I'm not, uh, I'm not willing to remain in position. He withdrew and, and with it, with, he withdrew three of his checkpoints which were manned by the Hazar and Afghan local police. As a result, the commander of Regional Command South, an American general, um, ordered uh, us to support a push by the Afghan National Army to go up and, and, and secure uh, that Khazurizgan uh, bowl to restore the security situation. Once we'd got up there, uh, we helped the Afghan National Army push out and start securing uh, the population. And part of that was the occupation of the Kadam Shalai checkpoint, which proved critical. And as a result of that, over 100 local uh, families had moved back into the area. When we left Khazurizgan, the local uh, governor was talking about reopening a school in that area, which had been shut down because of Taliban in uh, influence. And there had been no direct fire attacks uh, on any, uh, either in Afghan National Security Forces or ISAF forces in that area after we established that checkpoint. During the occupation of the Kadam Shalai checkpoint up in Khazurizgan, which was a vice, vital piece of ground which overlooked three valleys, uh, unfortunately Sap lost both legs to an improvised explosive device. I was out there the next day, we took another search team out there to replace the, the one which was evacuated. and. All I can say is that the stoic resilience of the Australian soldiers up there in not only carrying on and conducting their tasks in the same area uh, where they still found IDs further on, but also in keeping the ANA up there, who frankly wanted to leave at that point, uh, I was humbled by their stoicism. Um, and I don't think it's too much of an exaggeration to say that uh, they showed just as much resolve as any Anzac who been before them. What I found as the officer commanding of a mentoring team is that there was no one element which, uh, which anyone could have done without. It, it really was a combined arms team. Everything we did at all levels was a combined arms approach and we were the, the strength was the sum of our parts. Um, the engineers did a fantastic job in identifying and disposing of improvised explosive devices, often in very testing circumstances. And they did it all uh, steadfastly, and they were an integral part of the team. Um, and they allowed the infantrymen to uh, escort the ANA and mentor the ANA in being able to do their job. Um, what I found as the officer commanding of a mentoring team is that there was no one element which uh, which anyone could have done without. It, it really was a combined arms team. Everything we did at all levels was a combined arms approach, and we were the, the strength was the sum of our parts. I found uh, during the tour of Afghanistan that the junior, junior leaders 
uh, within the mentoring team were absolutely exceptional, be they junior non-commissioned officers or junior officers. Um, and it just reminded me of how important it is to have uh, an army which trains hard in Australia to produce leaders who can cope with very demanding circumstances. Uh, it was a junior lieutenant who kept the ANA uh, on the top of the Kadam Shillet checkpoint after we suffered an IED strike, which uh, sadly resulted in a double amputation of uh, one of my soldier's legs. It was a junior uh, corporal who uh, gave advice off the battlefield um, to be able to allow us to manoeuvre forces during a contact. Um, it was a junior corporal uh, who was manning a mortar section who jumped on the radio because he realised that uh, comms were difficult and relayed for AME to come in and pick up not only our injured Australian soldier but on another occasion uh, some injured Afghan soldiers who also suffered an IED strike uh, up in Khan. They are exceptional young soldiers uh, and as long as, uh, as long as we have junior commanders like that uh, I believe that the Australian Army will be able to do anything that government asks of it. I suppose um, the, the latter part of our tour was probably uh, more frustrating for the soldiers operationally in that after a number of insider attacks, uh, not just the three, uh, the, the insider attack which claimed the life of three soldiers from the task group, but across, uh, across Afghanistan, meant that more stringent force protection measures were introduced which led to a decrease in patrolling and, and an increase in uh, static security tasks within our own base. It would be wrong to assume that over in patrol base Wali at least that insider attacks were the defining moment or the defining aspect of our, our tour. I think the successes we had in Khazurizgan, the successes we had in Ramadan, the uh, interaction between the police and the ANA. Uh, we ran the first courses to get, which were both joint police and ANA, to increase the cooperation between the two uh, security aspects of the security force. Those are the dis the defining aspects of the tour. I think uh, as the, as as the mission was ending, obviously thoughts turned to home and uh, and seeing loved ones. In my case, my wife and children, and uh, you look forward to getting back. Um, but I, I just want to emphasise that the Australian Army is a professional army and its soldiers are professional soldiers. Uh, there wasn't a man there who didn't want to be there. There wasn't a man there who didn't take pride in, uh, in what they were doing. And I feel that for the six months we were there, uh, we made our little patch of Afghanistan a safer place. And it was a better place for us having been there. So uh, whilst you look forward to getting home, um, you you do so with a sense of, uh, of pride in what you, and in my case, my soldiers, have achieved uh, on their tour. I have served uh, in a number of operational tours around, around the world, Northern Ireland, Iraq, Timor, and Afghanistan. Um, in Afghanistan, I, I saw, frankly, uh, some, of the, some of the more base, evil, aspects of what mankind is, is want to do to mankind. Uh, I remember a patrol which went on uh, patrol up in Khazurizgan and some children started running alongside the patrol. It was the first uh, patrol they'd seen in that particular uh, valley just heading off from the Khazurizgan bowl and they were chattering away. And uh, the patrol commander asked the interpreter what are they saying and they said they're asking will the school reopen, they want to go back to school, will the school reopen? And when uh, the patrol commander said, why was it shut? They said, because the Taliban said, if our children go to school, and if we go to school as children, they will cut our hands off. Now, it's, it's things like that which, uh, which make you believe, and those children, and, and trying to create a better future for them, that I believe is the morally right thing to do. And uh, whilst it may not particularly be fashionable to say, I believe that uh, we are very fortunate in Australia. We have a fantastic country. We live in a liberal democracy, but sometimes the price for that is to do our bit to try and make the world a better place. And for myself and my soldiers, that's certainly what we felt we were doing. In my experience of working in two different armies and also serving alongside the American Army, soldiers have basic traits the world over. I think the Australian soldier is set apart by his, uh, his sense of humour, 
his ability to uh, communicate and work alongside uh, people from other nations, uh, his lack of any sense of arrogance, um, and a general understanding that uh, soldiering is a hard business for hard people, and the stoicism that he, they showed whilst doing that, uh, I think is, is an outstanding trait. Uh, and I was humbled to have been, had the privilege to command them in Afghanistan.